Hercules Gomez joins us. It seems like everybody's got a take on this, Herc. What do you make of it all? Well, it's not that it's not just that the U.S. men's national team lost out on a potential uh, great prospect. It's more that it's being reinforced how little you value this type of player. This is a player who played since the U14s, U15s, U16s, 17s, all the way to U20s with the U.S. men's youth national teams. And all of a sudden, he's going to switch. Why? Uh, simple, quite, simple answer is they just don't value him in the United States, the Federation, the way the Mexican Federation has valued him. They put on a full court press with El Turco Mohamed, the Monterey head coach, being in the front runner over there, uh, pressing Jonathan Gonzalez to make the switch. His parents were pressuring him as well. He had a lot of pressure from them. And ultimately, it was the phone call from Juan Carlos Osorio and the potential looming World Cup at stake for Jonathan Gonzalez that really sealed it. But this just reinforced what many of us have already felt about how little we value a player like Jonathan Gonzalez within the U.S. soccer circles here. Aren't we just reading too much into it, sir? As you say, his parents wanted him to play for Mexico. He wanted to play for L3. Don't we just respect his decision? Why do we all of a sudden make links about this is where the U.S. national team are failing? They need more scouts. Their recruitment needs to be better. Was, not, was this not just a personal choice from an 18-year-old who dreamed of playing for L3? It absolutely is just a personal choice. But along with the other revelation, Thomas Rong, the chief scout for U.S. soccer today, revealed that they only have one full-time scout. These are systematical issues. We prioritize different things in this country. We value different things. These type of players keep leaving because they don't see opportunity within MLS for, for, for top flight football. They keep going to these Mexican clubs. Jonathan Gonzalez was found playing a tournament called Alianza. It's a showcase uh, for Mexican-American kids in the United States where all of a sudden all these Liga MX clubs come down and they pretty much have their pick of the litter. This kid had 13 offers from 13 different ML, uh, Liga MX clubs. He wasn't heavily wow. scouted. It was Hugo Perez who found him, who's no longer with the U.S. soccer program. This is systematical. It needs to change. We're going to keep losing players like this. So how do you address that? How do you fix this? Well, there is no quick fix. Uh, one, of the, one of the easy things would be get more scouts, uh, prioritize different things. It's no, it's no longer, should be no longer a suburban sport. Uh, in other countries, it's a reflection of their culture and the, in the makeup of their cities in that country. It's not like that in this country. We need to change that. It needs to be from the ground up. There is a lack of pickup culture. There is more of a suburban sport. This is a pay-to-play system. It's backwards. Our pyramid is backwards. We need to change it. Herc, you've been actively on Twitter. It's interesting looking at what you've been trying to promote there. Yeah, it, and it's, it's been years coming that we should... It, this U.S. men's national team failure shouldn't be the reason we're all of a sudden changing things. We should be already changing things. We should be trying to be a better footballing nation. We have all the resources in the world. There are 370 uh, million people that live in this country. There should be no reason why we have only one full-time scout. That full-time scout, who knows what type of uh, football or soccer they want to prioritize. These players are, are utile. They, they are players who can be of need. They fit a different mold, and we don't value that. We need to start, we need to start looking elsewhere, start doing different things, or else nothing's going to change.